Is Bitcoin in big trouble? Many say we're in danger of much lower prices because of the continued fallout from the FTX scandal. More than 3,500 Bitcoin that have slumbered for more than 10 years are now awake. And rumor has it that Elon Musk is working on a crypto wallet for Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, it's officially become more fun than Netflix. And finally, a longtime friend of the show has won his AT&T SimJack court case. Get ready for hijinks and some low jinks on our grim outlook for Bitcoin. Bad news, episode number 652 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, two, ignition. Who's bad? You have landed in the Republic of Bad Cryptopia, smack dab between the metaverse morons. Joel Com and Travis Wright, your guides, your Sherpa Derpas on this journey to the Web3 future. Welcome to the show. I'm here with the lo fi, low IQ. Derpy derp. Let's talk about the truthers. We duck, duck, go the thing so you don't have to. And why not? With over 10 million downloads, we must be doing something right. We're certainly not here based on our dashing good looks alone. Well, I think I it's agree. because we offend people per capita more so than most podcasts. And we, you, you're still tuning in. So thank you. Uh, we're, we're not hungry. doing it just to upset people intentionally. We're no. doing it just to talk common sense and wake people up along well, the way. Well, the some truth, people- yeah, it's upsetting to some people. I mean, it's really, it is challenging to come out from your bubble. If you have a certain mindset and you pin your foundations on certain philosophies, ideas, concepts that you think beyond a shadow of doubt are true, and then somebody comes along and rattles that cage, that can rattle your core. If you find your identity in that, and that can be really scary for people. And there's so many people that find their identity in what they believe is is true and i'm not talking about stuff that would actually impact somebody's identity right Mm -hmm. you know in your spirituality sure that can go to your core and that can shake you up too if you if you discover that maybe i'm not maybe i haven't got that completely nailed down but politically speaking um culturally speaking you get your cage rattled find yourself on the other side of an issue and all of a sudden you lose friends who guess what weren't really friends in the first place Mm hmm. And I noticed this, you know, having been in the marketing world, like Joel's been in the marketing world for so many years. Like I saw a, a poll, a popular poll that was um, around, you know, should should Twitter let Donald Trump back on its platform? And it was it, it was a poll on LinkedIn and it was a top marketing guy. Um, actually, I saw it, it was it was yeah, Pete Cashmore. It was Pete Cashmore. Yeah. The creator of Mashable. And it was like 70% of those people were like, no, Trump should not be back on. And Weak. so I just, I look at that and I go, wow, look at all those, all those, you know, upset marketers who don't even realize in a lot of ways, you know, there's this guy, Edward Bernays, he's the inventor of public relations and, and propaganda. And he knew that propaganda and PR go hand in hand. And it's weird to me that most marketers, according to that poll, 70 something percent of the people, um, they buy in to a lot of the PR and propaganda that they're sold. I saw the marketers, most of them were some of the very first ones to go out and get the jab. Many of them hate hate the right for what they've been told to hate. And I don't know that they do a lot of their own research, but they're in my mind some of the best marketers in the world don't realize when they're being marketed to no they watch cnn they 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 watch msnbc and they get all the information they need they read the new york times i guess that's all the information they think they need and that's the thing i did a post on on instagram about that it's that you know those who win the wars write the history books and a lot of times what you think you know about something is not the truth but really what the powers that be want you to know that's what they want you to think 
And so that's why they spend so much time and money to indoctrinate people along certain paths. And so you can see some people getting really upset around the fact that Trump, you know, is back. But what did Trump ever actually do to, you know, thwart or go around any of the rules that Twitter had? It was just that the powers that be hated Orange Man, Orange Man bad. So get rid of Orange Man. And even though he never violated any of the terms and services, right? So to me, that's always an interesting thing. And then, you know, Elon did his thing this week where he did a big poll. And um, well, let's talk know. about that when we get to the part where we're going to talk about Twitter, because uh, we got we got news to cover. Yeah, well, I just kind of start talking about Twitter anyway, because I know because you're like, I want to talk, anyway. talk about Twitter. I know, you want to play the sound effect, play your sound effect. I'm, I'm going to play the sound effect. Here we go. And refreshing to take a look at CoinGecko.com. Timestamp is November the 21st, 2022, 2.34 AST, because in Puerto Rico, we don't change time here. So for half the year, we're we're with New York, and then New York and the rest of the world decides in the fall they're going to fall back an hour, and we're like, no, it's the same time here. So we're an, uh, uh, New York is now an hour behind us, so figure it out. The total crypto market cap, $823 billion. Bitcoin, $16,000. Exactly. I've seen it go into the 15s and then bump back up. Ethereum, $1,101. BNB, $253. And where is Solana now? Solana is now, look at this, $11.67. If I was going to pick, Travis, one token that I think is done, I'm going to say it's Solana. I'm not saying the blockchain is going to die. I'm saying that as the place, because it's so closely tied to FTX and the money that mm -hmm. came from there, that why would you uh, build on Solana now when there's so many other options? Yeah, when you look at their <laughs> chart overall, the Solana price chart max, when I was sitting around a few bucks, a few bucks, and then, you know, you look at, you just kind of lay that over what happened with ICP, Internet Computer Protocol, how FTX and then sort of thrashed that and blew the price up and then shorted it all the way down, took that money that they gained from a legitimate product and then started pumping up Solana. And then, you know, you can literally see when it happened with Solana it was like last, well, it was December of 2020 and then pump, 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 and pump, and then really started pumping in July of 2021, pump, 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 all the way up to over 250 bucks uh, in November of 2021, 220 bucks. Now it's 13 bucks, 11 bucks, 12 bucks, something like that. Yeah, and it we should know. go away. It should go away. It's been heavily manipulated and probably a very centralized L1, we know, and the people behind it could be very nefarious. So, but here, but here's what you're talking about. Here's ICP. They pumped it up to four hundred and sixty-one dollars, and then mm. boom, just and when was that? When, when when did that happen? That would have been in May of 2021, is when it yeah. first came out, and then they manipulated it down, 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 and so talked all kinds of trash. And now, I mean, they've got other. You know, we've been a fan since we learned of it and talked to Dominic, released mm -hmm. NFTs on it, uh, and have invested in Tonic Labs. You and I did. Uh, yeah. which is a, a, a great um, project on. So it seems to me looking at it, you can see it, Joel, you look at the time and you look at, at Solana uh, at that time, whenever uh, ICP came out, May of 2021, Solana was about 45 bucks. The price ended up dropping all the way down to 25, 26 bucks. And then ba boom, it went 10 X straight up from there, essentially up to 220 something dollars. So it's like, they took some of the losses or the gains that they got from manipulating ICP, dumping an actual decentralized product. Like ICP, when it comes to being fully decentralized, I think it's way better than Ethereum from what I understand on this. It's the most decentralized cryptocurrency, maybe aside from Bitcoin, which is decentralized, but the way that it was built, it wasn't built to cater to the cantillionaires, the super rich crypto whales. And so they did what they could to, bring the price way up and then they shorted it all the way down 
and now it's like three bucks or four bucks. ICP got really hosed, and hopefully though they can they can regain some of that uh, some of that. Uh, you know education. who's woken up to ICP is uh, Ben Armstrong, Bitboy Crypto. Um, you know we we knew Ben back when Ben was part of Beards and Bitcoin. You know years ago, and have watched his rise. He's worked his ass off. Um, did he make some mistakes shilling some tokens that ended up not working out? Yep, he did. But he quit doing that more than a year ago and started getting really serious about covering Bitcoin and the crypto industry. And I'm telling you, there is nobody out there right now that I'm following that is working harder about, you know, for the cause of Bitcoin and decentralization. He is calling out the the bad actors. He, you know, not only did he call out Sam Bankman Fried and FTX weeks before the collapse came, but he's digging. He, see, he's got, it's not just him. It's his community. Everybody sends him this stuff. And he has uncovered that Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, um, he has gone out there and said, Kevin O'Leary, I'm saying what he said. He's saying Kevin O'Leary and Sam Bankman Freed colluded to crash Celsius. He's saying mm. they, they intentionally did this. Um, right. And so that that in itself and that uh, he's calling and then they are getting tanked themselves. Right. So it's like, here's some instant right. karma going to get you. And, you know, we're not saying this about, you know, BitBoy. Go listen to BitBoy. We're, we're trying to get BitBoy's listeners to come over here and listen to us. Joel, I'll be telling people to go listen to BitBoy. <laughs> Okay. He he got he, some, <laughs> some dude was trying to dox him, and his community came together and doxed this dude who's now back up. His feed is one of the most entertaining feeds. Uh, I'm going to Twitter again because so much is revolving around Twitter right now. We'll get back to that. Here we go with some Bitcoin news: thirty five hundred sleeping Bitcoins from 2011 in a wallet that have not been moved in more than ten years have woken up. $60 million worth of Bitcoin have moved um, from the original wallets to uh, to new ones, right? Ah. Yeah. So it's really, I mean. It's one of the original, one of the original seven that did not spend any of the corresponding Bitcoin cash or Bitcoin SV associated with those Bitcoins. So conceivably, they don't, not only do they have 3,500 Bitcoins, there's 3,500 Bitcoin cash. Is that still a thing? I don't know if Bitcoin cash is even uh, still a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't, haven't so, heard that for a while. So there was a, a, a story that I think we touched on briefly last week that um, St. Kitts and St. Nevis, St. Kitts and Nevis are looking at having Bitcoin cash as a official currency of the island. I'm like, why would you pick Bitcoin cash? Right. I, I, Maybe it was in 2017. It's a good idea. Yeah. Now it's not. Uh, but this is interesting. Uh, people are removing their Bitcoin from exchanges and 1.2 million Bitcoin are now out of circulation. That's 6.3% of the current supply. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can look at it. And there's a really nice chart right here, historical data around crypto crashes. 14 crypto exchanges were responsible for the loss of 1.2 billion, which represents 6.3. So... That's what it's talking about. Bad exchanges are taking one have taken 1.2 billion out of circulation and they're lost. Where are they? Do we know? But, but Mount Gox, 650,000 Bitcoin was lost in that. You got Bitstamp and Cred and Celsius and all these other ones. Mm -hmm. FTX, 50,000 Bitcoin. Well, did they sell it? Is it somewhere? Do we know where they are? Um, hard, hard to, hard to uh, determine where they are. Well, people are coming down on uh, Naib Bukele, who is the president of El Salvador, for uh, holding 2,381 Bitcoin at an average price of $43,000. But he is doubling, tripling, quadrupling, octupling down, saying we are buying one Bitcoin every day starting tomorrow. That was on November 18th. Like he is looking and going, all right, we are not only going to dollar cost average, but we believe that the value of Bitcoin is going to go up significantly. And uh, this is a great buying opportunity. Great buying opportunity. Yeah. Take a look at that. That's nice. So, so um, you know, El Salvador, what they did. There's some other ones that's popping up. We're still hearing all this adoption of Bitcoin and crypto, you know, worldwide. But with just all this FTX shakedown, there's been kind of a what's going to happen next? What's the trust? 
level of crypto. And so it's almost like, you know, that FTX thing and then maybe the Genesis thing that's that's uh, that's brewing. We're hearing that Genesis might become insolvent and, and Gemini is using them. And are we near the bottom? Well, we're at that place where a lot of people or investors are in that state of despair. And so we could be nearing the bottom if that's the case, or, you know, it could be going down a little bit more before people start gaining trust in it and it starts moving back up. So one person who's that article, those, yeah. This it's, article here on Blockworks says exactly that, that uh, there's a grim outlook for Bitcoin and Ethereum prices as more bodies are surfacing. We have not yet seen the full ripple effects. In fact, we're not even two ripples yet. There's still an earthquake happening. Right. We I, I don't think that we've seen all of the earthquake yet, let alone the ripples. And as the ground continues to shake and it will, it's impossible to have billions of dollars tied up through this FTX scandal. And for there not to be others that are directly tied in with having assets tied into them. And so um, this article here, which, by the way, you can go read it for yourself in the show notes, badco.in forward slash 652 is uh, is where you're going to find this. It talks about Solana as well. And uh, as Travis mentioned, um, DCG is uh, the digital, was a digital currency group. And they're trying to raise a billion dollars in cash to protect Genesis from failing. Well, what I've read, Trav, is that there's no takers, none. So what does that mean? Earthquake. Right. Terra Luna, Celsius, Voyager, FTX, three, three Arrows Capital, and Genesis. And whoa. So, you know, keep an eye on this. We might not be near the bottom. Crypto still shaking out in the craziest crypto winter of all because we're having multiple collapses of Ponzi schemes that people were leveraging to make lots of money on. They weren't expecting crypto bottom to fall out like it did like it always does though joel the crypto bottom always but we're like no this one seems different because there's more people adopting it and we're just on the run so you can see that you know all these people were hiring more people and needing more money and more resources and and then but the liquidity drying up when crypto goes from sixty nine thousand down to sixteen thousand, that's a big loss of, of revenues in there for people who've lost cash and so it's a weird time for crypto you know what we failed in the crypto uh, community failed to factor in during this last run? Human nature, greed, where there's money, there's going to be bad actors taking advantage. And the fact that we don't have regulation uh, because we failed to self-regulate, as Christina Bruhan on a former episode of Continuum Market told us, um, he, BitBoy was going after Gary Gensler. He's calling out Gary Gensler and he's saying, this is your fault because you had an opportunity to bring about um, common sense regulation and you kept pushing it down the road and ignoring it. And did they do it on purpose? Is this all a, a, a part of a government conspiracy to make crypto look horrible so that they can step in and overregulate and and be tyrannical with CBDCs that can then control our lives the case could be made that that that's exactly what took place and, and then actually if you look at it and go down the rabbit hole and you see how closely tied the government entities were Gary Gensler how he's connected to you know, both both Sam Bankman Freed and, and Caroline Ellison and how there's just this weird stuff going on. And then all the money that was going to Ukraine that was filtering through FTX. It was going not only to Democrats, it was also going to rhinos like Mitch McConnell so you, and, and Kevin McCarthy. So you can actually see who are the powers on both sides of the fence that are actually working together, acting like they're separate and different. But you can totally tell, like, those same people, those rhinos that went to war, war on terrorism, Bush and Cheney, those guys, those those are the same people who are working with Obama, same people who are on the left side. There's It's a uniparty, and they work together, but they act like they're different, so we can feel that they were different. But realistically, probably 70-plus percent of Congress is part of those of the a part of those the consortium now that other 30 the you know the the make america great 
um, America first sort of, you know, politicians, those, those are growing in numbers. And you can see how, you know, if you're a Trump fan or not, it's irrelevant. What is relevant is that Trump basically said, you know, vote for these people. And of them, it was like 280 some odd people that he recommended got in and like 22 didn't. So he had like a 93% approval rate of what he he recommended candidates and here they were. So, the, but they're ousting those rhinos. I think rhinos are just as bad as those extreme leftists because they're extreme on both sides, but you think they're working on one side, but they're not. They're actually pretty treasonous when, when it all comes down to it, in my opinion. Uh, it's going to be pretty painful to watch this continue to do exactly what it's doing right now. Uh, let's get back to Twitter. So this is a tweet from NFT God who says Elon is working on a crypto wallet for Twitter. And then he breaks down why he thinks that is. CZ has invested $500 million. He says the writing is on the wall. Crypto and NFTs are coming to Twitter in a big way. All 350 million users will be in the Web3 ecosystem in two years. And if you're reading this, you're earlier than you can imagine. I don't disagree with any of that. I think that he's spot on. And I think my prediction is it's going to be dogecoin before bitcoin mm -hmm. so maybe that ties in with you know if, if that's the case doge by itself can't be built that's why platforms like doge chain have popped up mm -hmm. doge chain is taking a huge dump right now and uh but if they're developing stuff and twitter's going to be a part of that it would be interesting to see because doge doesn't have its own smart contracts platform whereas doge chain allows for some of that so that's why I've been kind of bullish on some of that stuff. But it, it's it's still, again, it's like we don't know what is Twitter going to look like with with native NFTs. And, and, and I like this tweet and send out some doge like uh, we're getting closer. We're getting closer to where where it's heading. Uh, the adoption still looks like it's moving forward, even though right now the price points are going down. I think that's just kind of the nature of the beast right now. We're in the dark, dark depths of winter, maybe to get even darker before it gets light, but historically it's always become light. As soon as people become so, de they get they feel that depths of despair with crypto and they start capitulating and getting out, then crypto starts to revive itself. So we'll see, that should happen sometime next year. It's gonna start shaking up and moving. Here's forward. the poll that Elon posted, reinstate former President Trump, yes or no? I have some analysis on this and I think it it's very important that we analyze what happened here because it, it tells us a lot about um, how what what's real and what's not. So when Elon tweets something, if you're on Twitter, you're watching, you're paying attention, you see it right now. He is the center of the social media universe. Zuckerberg is off somewhere in another galaxy. Nobody cares about him. Elon has made Twitter a lightning rod. Um, and he posts should you reinstate, should we reinstate former President Trump? Well, several million votes were in, and it was 60% yes, 40% no. Now, look how it ended up. 51.8% yes, 48.2% no. Why do you think that is, Trav? Why do you think there was a huge disparity in the first few million votes versus how the poll ended up? Um, well, to me, it would make sense that here are the people whose first inclination they saw it. Okay. I would say now, you know, more probably right leaning people are maybe actively seeing his, his polls first. Um, then some of the outrage started to, to waffle through where people would hear what was going on. Like, what? Don't wait, don't let orange Cheeto back on. And then, so they started getting upset and then they probably started to unleash the bot farms because they were millions of votes down. So the bot farms got unleashed. To me, as, as soon as I saw the poll, my first thought was, okay, so this is going to be a bot. This is going to self-identify the bot farms, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you look, it's almost like, wow, how many of those are probably bots? I would say probably about 5 million of those votes were probably bots. And, and would you say that those bots lean towards the no they skew bots almost always seem to, to lean to the left mm -hmm. from what i've seen mm -hmm. so this from my own research what, does, here. what what that tells me a couple things first of all he is way more popular than why is my camera fuzzy now 
focus camera. He is way more popular than the loud noise makers on the left would have you believe. And I am going to stand right here and call myself an election denier. I, I still think that they cheated their asses off in 2020 and ballot harvested, dead people voted, some people voted twice, there was a legal activity, and that the election was stolen. I And that's why they're so scared of him. That's why they're terrified of him. Their livelihoods are on the line. If he calls out big government and the, the broken world financial system, there's a lot of people that are going to be really upset. And so what do they care if he runs again, if they don't think he has a chance? They're scared. They do think he has a chance. And so they have to silence him. That's why their heads are exploding. Mm -hmm. Well, That's and realistically, uh, if you saw, you know, what happened last time with the, with the, with the election and campaigns, the first time, 2016, right? When the Donald Reddit was so big, it just took off and it got so big and so important then they started realizing with the Alex Jones thing that they could start, you know, kicking people off of social media. So they kicked Alex Jones off and then Milo Yiannopoulos was, was too dangerous for them. And so they had to kick him off and then they just started anybody. It just turned into anybody who they dislike. It turned into that. Now, what I've always remembered about January 6th is that, you know, January 6th, all of the states had a chance to state their mind and, and to, to say if they felt that the, their votes should not be um, validated or not. And so they were having this moment and there was the swing votes that was getting ready to come up. And at that precise moment, the Capitol Police seemed to open up the doors of, you know, the Capitol. So all these people started coming in and then they called. Uh, no, the no, that, that didn't happen. That no, that video was not on CNN or MSNBC it was or ABC all or CBS. Yeah, they didn't show that video. That didn't happen. That's fake news. But regard, regardless, it was. They say it was. Oh, it was a violent thing. Well, only one of the protesters died. Some random cop shot somebody who was inside there. That's the only person who died. And they were there to fight for freedom. And they were there to fight for you know truth uh, in these ballots. But whenever Congress was actually going to talk about them. That's when the quote unquote January 6th, in, uh, you know, um, inception happened where they were having that, that, that insurrection. But really, there was a lot of inception to that that you really got to dive into. The number two person in charge of Proud Boys, quote unquote, was an FBI informant. They had many plain uh, clothed uh, informants out there in the crowd. Antifa was dressed up like Trump supporters. So you had all these people sort of riling stuff up. And then now it's a talking point that, oh, J6, look how horrible they are. Like, you don't even understand what actually went on because you weren't paying attention to the whole thing. And so, you know, that's it. So they're scared about J6. But, dude, as soon as he came in, they're like, oh, we're going to impeach him. And then what happened? Oh, I'm going to call uh, Ukraine, and I'm going to withhold any sort of money to Ukraine until we can figure out what corruption is going on in Ukraine. And then they go, oh, no, we're going to impeach you for asking about Ukraine. And we then need more money. We need more and money. And so now they've sent him a hundred billion dollars, Joel. Like, but nobody's going to look into that because that money then somehow through like FTX and through some of these other channels goes to them. They they launder it up and distribute it out to the um, you know uh, representatives and senators that they want to have that money. And so it's all anytime you see big money from America being voted on or sent to another country. You always have to assume that that's going to find its way back to those politicians' foundations. Mm -hmm. That's what it used to happen. Now they're making it even more blatant where they're taking it directly and sending millions of dollars. These corporations are sending politicians millions of dollars. That should be totally illegal to do. Now, if the Supreme Court had done their job with Citizen, what was the one? The one Citizen USA, Citizen uh, United, Citizens United where you could say that corporations can't be people, so they can't be voting or they can't be giving lots of money. There really shouldn't there really shouldn't be untethered amounts of money that you can give politicians for them to use and then to, to, to launder that money. There's a lot of bullshit that goes on in the upper echelons of politics. And it's it's ran like a mafia, Joel, and there's a very little that, that we can really do with it especially when people stand up and then they say you're part of an insurrection and they still have those people in jail 
two yeah. years later. Criminal. And it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Criminal. You know, it, it, what what Twitter has revealed is the emotional level, that the, the, the fragility that people have. You have even a rock and roll superstar, Trent Reznor, okay, of, of uh, Nine Inch Nails, leaving Twitter because he can't handle that Trump is back. And so Elon's actually calling him out. Turns out that Trent Nine Inch Nails Reznor is actually a crybaby. I mean, whatever else you think of, of Elon Musk, I mean, I, I'm not worshiping the man. I do think that based on what he's done and what he says he's going to do, he we uh, we have a living legend right now that future generations are going to look back and they will idealize idolize him for what he accomplishes. We get him right now, and he's an amazing troll. He reminds me, Travis, of the picture of Albert Einstein where Einstein is joking around. He's sticking out his tongue like, uh, like that, like at that moment, people who knew him could appreciate, Oh, Al's just being silly, but we idolize Einstein. Um, and we look back at that picture and think, Oh, look, he's just being real. Elon is just being real. And people who are so fragile that they leave. It's one thing to threaten to leave and tons mm -hmm. of them do that, or they're going to move to Canada. Right. It's another yeah. to be an actual crybaby and leave because you can't handle somebody whose opinion differs from yours. And that's what Trent Reznor is saying right here. It's like even without Trump, what he was saying um, uh, or even Elon, I just find that it's become such a toxic environment for my mental health. I need to tune out. I don't feel good being there anymore because he must be a whiny leftist. Like how is Trent Reznor, you know, this fucking guy who people have looked up to and his music is, will just speak to them and like wow he is such a dainty wallflower that he can't handle he's not rock this. and roll he's well, not and then rock rage and roll. against the machine is just like hey let's shill for the machine right. right it's almost like there's no rage left because it's like they never fully identified who the machine was and they can't tell that they're now on the team machine they are team and machine. They're on Team Machine, and they don't even realize it, and they think that they're still rebelling against the machine. How can somebody who's been an outsider of politics for all this time be the one who's caused all the problems in politics? It's, it's, it's implausible, and it's impossible that that could even be the case. Now, I'm not even a Trump nut hugger because I've talked to his friends, and I go, you know— he was out there promoting the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I think he could be controlled opposition meant to sort of divide people in a way that's not been divided before and then just kind of make the right complacent so that nothing actually happens. And then what I've seen is no swamp got arrested. Nobody who's been doing bad mafia right. shit, anything bad happened to any of them. So I don't know that he's good. Now, I also don't think Ron DeSantos is good because Ron DeSantis went to Yale same place that Skull and Bones uh, Bushes went. The Bushes are funding DeSantos. And then when you say you hear the media talking about how great DeSantos is, DeSantos should be the one that the Republicans choose. DeSantos, DeSantos. And I go, wait a second, uh, Ron DeSantis? Like, and I think his first name is now Rhonda. It's Rhonda Santos. And um, it's because he died. Help me, Rhonda Santos. Help me, Rhonda Santos. Yeah. And so it's like, I'm not convinced anybody is the mm -hmm. savior on any side, guys. So when you look like, I don't like your opinion, well, that's okay. I'm asking questions. I'm trying to figure things out because it's so foggy. The fog of war is a real thing. And if you don't believe that in some ways we are in World War III, it is an information war. And that's what Alex Jones has been telling us. This is an information war. Which and we got to pay attention. Free Alex Jones. I'm like, free speech is free speech, and Elon is holding back on him because he's dangerous. Words are not violence, people. Speech is not violence. You are either a proponent of free speech or you are not. And if you are not, then guess what? It's sometime your speech will be controlled, and you're not going to be real happy about it. Now, I'm with you on Trump. I'm like, may, you know, maybe it's time to stand down. I wasn't thrilled when he announced he was running again. I think DeSantis is a better candidate, but this is stupid right here. He says stupid stuff and he does stupid stuff. He has basically said he has no interest in returning to Twitter. Okay. So Truth Social, Social has a few million people. You're preaching to the choir. Why would you not be where 325 million people are if you're running for president? He well, will he be back. 
he will be. You back. think of it like this. Here's the deal. It's like it's not so much that it's Twitter. It's a platform that you have 80 million users on. Right. He'll be That's back. what it is. He'll be back. And this the simple thing you and I talked about, right? When we heard about it, or we're thinking about you know Elon letting him back on. It's like, dude, tweet it on Truth Social first, right. and then two hours later, post it on Twitter. You know, with a link back to your, to your Truth Social. You'll be able to use it to drive people to your platform yep. if that's what you want. But if you got 85, 88 million people that follow you already, that's a pretty big fucking audience. That's more votes than Biden got in, two, in 2020. No, allegedly. no, no. That no, he got happen. 81 million. No. He got 81 no. million. No, so, Travis, I, mean, he, he, I believe he, what the uh, government tells me because anything he, otherwise listen, is I might be a terrorist. Now, listen, he, you know that very well that he caused an insurrection and that somebody died because of him. Um, hey, newsflash for those of you who still believe that. Here's some more baby food for you. I opened the little thing of Gerber right from the uh -huh. media. And just nobble it down because yeah. go ahead. Keep believing what you're going to believe. The evidence is strictly to the contrary. Did not happen. Well, if you want to believe the thing. it, you need to. We got to do what you want to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do or not to do, but I'm going to say this is that there has been evidence that Trump has asked for National Guard assistance for that January 6th because it could get out of hand. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Nancy and the Capitol Police told him no, because mm -hmm. why? Well, then they're going to put all these FBI agents out in the crowd that's sort of riling people up and Antifa that's acting like they're Trump supporters. And then the shit goes down. And then what do they immediately do? They build a wall around Washington, D.C., and then they, they supply it with National Guard that they throw in garages and just let them sleep on the floor. There's no accommodations for them or anything. And it's just a really weird thing. And basically, in the steel of the night, you know, they stole the election. And then they basically had the whole inauguration behind closed gates. Uh, right? You're election and, denier, and you need to be put on psychiatric medicine. Well, for that. I mean, the, the, the Democrats do that every time they lose. Historically, the Democrats have cried about how it was a fake election. But now, all of a sudden, when it was a fake election with these mail-in drop drop ballots and and just go drive here and harvest mm -hmm. a bunch of votes like that we shouldn't question that but anytime right. before that we should always question it and they should eat a bag of dicks so. and we will question stuff here and whether you think we're conspiracy theorists or not we don't care we're going to pursue truth we're going to look at the facts and if if there's data if there's facts mm -hmm. that arise that that trump is a pedophile hell we're going to call it out so far, there's been nothing like that. Uh, let's end this on a uh, uh, an up note here. Uh, baby Al Capone agrees to a settlement. The guy's name is Ellis Pinsky. And I'm going to make this a little bigger here so we can see this. He's a 20-year-old crypto hacker. And this is the guy who sim swapped Michael Turpin, a friend of the show, via his AT&T mobile phone. He took $24 million in crypto from Turpin. And they found out who the guy was. And he's already paid back $2 million, And now he's, been, he's agreed to pay back the full $22 million, according to this New York court. So he was 15 at the time this happened, 15 years old. He was a 10th grader in suburban New York at the time of the hack. And um, Turpin wins. Way to go, Michael. Mm. Glad you're getting your, your crypto back. Yeah, it's probably not $22 million worth now. But, I mean, good luck getting what you can get back. I mean, there's some, there's some vindication that happened right there. Not bad. Yeah. So um, we got a lot of great interviews coming up. One of our most popular guests from 2019 was G. Edward Griffin, who wrote The Creature from Jekyll Island, all about the Federal Reserve. He's agreed to come back on the show to, uh, to discuss all the latest goings on in the government and uh, the World Economic Forum and everything that's happening with the Fed. You're not going to want to miss that. We uh, recently interviewed the author of the uh, the, the biography, uh, Running with John McAfee, and that show's coming out soon. Uh, we've got a bunch of other great stuff coming up as well. You don't want to miss it, and you don't want to miss the NFT drops that are free to members of the Bad Crypto Nifty Club. Is the Bad Crypto Nifty Club free? Well, no, it's about 
$2.20 right now to get this NFT at badcrypto.uncut.fm. If you have this badass looking spinny NFT in your wallet, you're going to get drops from us. In fact, the Brad Mills um, NFT that we featured in the last episode, you still got time to get that one in. We said Thanksgiving day is the cutoff that you have to have one of these in your wallets and you're going to get that drop for free. And Wait, I thought you said, I thought you said that you have to be wearing cutoffs. Like, so they gotta be wearing jorts. No, I'm, I'm okay with that. No, they don't, they have, don't to. have to be wearing cutoffs. Okay. We don't need pictures of that. And okay. then the episode that's coming out next is our interview with Brendan Ike of brave and there's going to be an nft associated with that so go get your bad crypto nifty club nft for 0 0.002 wrapped eth that's about two dollars and 20 cents right now and you're going to get free drops bad crypto.uncut.fm is the place to get them and, and that's it trav that's uh that's our news which turned out to be uh, extra long with extra ranting because we're just going to be who we are and we're going to question stuff. And, um, you know, you, our, our audience, our tribe finds us. That's the way I look at it. And if you're not, they part do of the find tribe, us. They do. And I appreciate them. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening and being a part of this bad boy. Yeah. We're, we're having a lot of fun right. here. Lots of more content coming your way. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode. And then of course, stay bad. Any point. Who's bad? The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.